GitLab CI/CD is one of the best solution in this industry. But when it comes to CD pipelines, the things get more complicated because a bunch of security related features are involved. So I give you seven tips how to secure your CD pipelines and let's dive into it. Hey, what's up? This is Xinyan. I'm senior engineer in GitLab. I sometimes give you cool tips and tricks on GitLab CI/CD features. This channel also provides more company activities such as newly introduced features in upcoming milestones. So if you are interested, please consider subscribing. There are a bunch of security features that are available for protecting your CD workflow. For example, protected branches, protected tags, protected environments, so many protected features out there. But because of that, users easily get confused about which feature should be used for which scene, which purpose, what purpose. And actually, I saw that many users are using uh, these security features in a slightly unexpected way. So uh, please make sure that you correctly configure these things. Without further ado, I give you a first tip. So the first tip I give you is that setting a proper role to team members. Now, there are five roles available in GitLab. Guest, Reporter, Developer, Maintainer, and Owner. And the given permissions increase from left to right. So the guest has the least permission, whereas owner has a full control on your project. Now, what's important here is that maintainer role or above has access to project setting. This project setting includes all of the protected features, for example, protected variables. These protected variables also tend to include production secret. So please make sure that if the person has access to production environment, then the person should be maintainer role or above. But if the person should not have access to production environment at all, then the person should be developer, developer role or below. Tip number two is protect the deployment branch. Now in a typical CD workflow, every time a new commit is merged into master branch, a new deployment pipeline is created. So you wanna make sure that going to project setting, protect the branch roles, and then the deployment branch, for example, master branch is only modifiable by maintainer role or above. Now, the secret behavior of this feature is that the other team members who don't have an access to the protected branch, they also don't have a permission to run a pipeline. So this feature is useful to prevent them from running a deployment pipeline accidentally. Tip number three is protect the production secret. Now, without secrets, your deployment job will never succeed. For example, deploying to AWS, deploying to GCS, or even Azure, they always require secrets to proceed the deployment to their infrastructure. Now you can define these secrets into your project setting and the variable section, but you wanna make sure that these variables are protected. If the variables are protected, these variables are exposed only on deployment pipelines on protected branches. In the other world, it prevents the secrets from being exposed on random pipelines on random future branches. Tip number four is protect the production environment. Now let's assume that there are a bunch of operators and then developers in your project and some of them has maintainer role. But you want to make sure that only operators have access to production environment. In this case, you're going to project setting and then protected environment section and create a new rule that production environment is only deployable by operators. By doing so, developers, even if they have maintainer role, are losing permission to execute deployment job to production, sub production server. Tip number five, set the environment scope to the protected variables. Now we cover the protected branches, variables, environments, and then now it's time to set the environment scope. So environment scope on variable is basically that the variables is exposed on pro uh, deployment pipelines to 
production environment. Now let's say there are a bunch of deployment pipelines, for example, deploying to staging environment. You wanna make sure that the production secret is not exposed on this type of deployment pipelines. So you set the environment scope and then deployment pipelines only have uh, the production secrets when it deploys to production server only. Tip number six, define the production secrets on runner side. Now, what is runner? Runner is an actual job executor for your pipeline jobs. For example, you create a new pipeline on your project and the pipeline set as transitions to pending, to running, to success or fail. These jobs are not executed in GitLab itself, but it's executed by external program that has a capability to actually execute the deployment scripts that defined on your GitLab say YAML. Now, if you are user on GitLab.com, you don't need to do anything for runners because GitLab provides shared runners by default. But when it comes to deploying the pipelines, it's worth consulting to set up runners by yourself because it has more flexibilities that now you can define production secrets on runner side. In the previous tips, we covered that you can define secrets on project setting, variable section, but now you can move these things to runner side. By doing so, you can effectively prevent the other maintenance from reading the secrets unnecessarily. When you set up a new runner, there are two checkpoints. The first point is to set the proper run attack. Now, when you register a new runner, CLI prompts you to set a run attack, and you make sure that the tag is corresponding to the tag defined on GitLab CI YAML. The second point is that to make sure your runner is protected. You go into runner setting page and make sure that protect checkbox is on. By doing so, runner can run on pipelines on protected branches only. By using these options, you can make sure that the runners run on deployment jobs only. Before getting into the last tip, why don't you smash the like button for me if you get the value out of this video. Tip number seven is to separate project for operators. Let's say you are in a large organization and large project. There are many job roles there, release managers, operators, uh, SLRs, engineering managers, engineering lead, etc. Question is, what role do you give to them? For example, engineering leaders, maybe they should have maintainer role. And of course, operators should have a maintainer role because they need access to production environments. There are so many maintainers in your project. The problem is that all of them have an access to project setting that might include production secrets. But you don't want some of them to access to the secrets because they are not supposed to do that. So how do you solve the problem? One of the solutions is to create a new project for operators and moving all CD configuration to the new project, including GitLab CI YAML, and assign only operators to the new project. By doing so, you can isolate the CD permissions from the original project and prevent developers from accessing to the CD configuration. And you can connect the developer project and the operator project by cross-project pipelines. I won't go into the details of cross-project pipelines, but just in case, I will share the link in the description below, so please check it out. So these are the tips to protect your CD pipeline, CD workflow. Please let me know if you have any questions. You can leave your comments below or create a new issue in GitLab. That's all. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.